Hey, Hawkeye fans, welcome back. Well, today we are talking all things winter sports. Football has started spring ball, so we'll get into that. And for our interview, we have women's wrestler and UFC fighter, Bella Mir. You do not want to miss this. Welcome back to Talking Hawks, the offseason presented by Estella's. Well, Matt, I'm so excited that Estella's is our presenting sponsor of the offseason. Yeah, they always bring delicious food. It's unbelievable. And we go there often enough, but the fact that they give us fresh food like this mm -hmm. every time is incredible. It is the best fresh build your own burrito, burrito bowl, whatever you want. It is the best in the Iowa City, Coralville area. Do you have a go-to? A go-to? Yeah. If you don't want to know my order, I get so much stuff in it. <laughs> I do. I'm not like you, because what, what do you get? I get the buff. Chill out. I get the buff. It's the pancake one. It's the breakfast one. It's unbelievable. I do build your own. Ready? Grilled chicken. No rice. Black beans. Corn salsa. Mild salsa. I also like their green salsa as well. Salsa verde. I think that's what it's called. Sour cream. Guacamole. Queso. And shredded cheese. Yeah, that's a burrito. You fill it up. It's so good. Estella's the best. Yeah, really excited uh, that they were able to pair with us. So if you are looking for locally owned, fresh food made with love, check out Estella's today. Hello, Matt. What's up? How's it going? God is good. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's a very rainy day out today. It is a rainy day. It is Tuesday, April 2nd, as we are. I feel like it's been raining since yesterday. It's going to snow tomorrow. Is that what you said? Yeah, snow tomorrow. I feel like we're in that weird, what do they call it? Like fake spring. Faux it's spring. like, no, no, we had fake spring. This oh. is second winter. <laughs> that's what they call it second winter and then we'll go into yeah. real spring and then it goes into summer when does real spring start we're in april i think next week i don't know i'll believe it when i see it believe it when you see it well we have to give a couple of shout outs to some of our sponsors first of all we haven't talked about them we've talked to them like not to them we've talked about them just in passing storyline media storyline multimedia which one is it multi there's multiple medias <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Storyline Multimedia. Dang it. Um, they're the ones that put this whole production together. They yeah. do all of the lighting, camera, sound, audio, um, social media for Talking Hawks. They also give positive criticisms when the intro isn't as good and then we have to redo it, but then it comes out really good. This is true. And um, yeah, they do all of it and they do a phenomenal job. If you are a local business in the area of I don't even know how far they go or uh, quite a ways outside of they're like located in Iowa city. Um, but if you're looking for some marketing material, video, photo, multimedia, okay. Um, storyline multimedia is, uh, is the way to go. They're the guys that you need. Whether it be it's, personal or companies, mm -hmm. uh, they work with some of, uh, prestigious companies around here. So it's we just cool. did, um, <laughs> we did, a like promo for the Heartlanders. Um, <laughs> Like a week ago. I don't know if anybody saw it, but it was me like, quote unquote, playing hockey. Um, <laughs> it was really good. Shoulder pads look great. Hey, the video turned out really <laughs> good. I've had people be like, I didn't know you played hockey. Yeah. Girls got to have I. hobbies, you know? Yeah, no. <laughs> anyway, they do a phenomenal job. So um, just want to shout out them because we've had a lot of people comment like, hey, it's a really like great production. It looks so... Um, yeah, it's 100% not us. It's, yeah. the, it's the other people. Looks so polished. Looks great. So anyway, just wanted to give a shout out to them. And then the other one is right here, performance restoration. This one is a I'm big one. I'm not putting the hat on, but <laughs> you can I wish see you it. Would. <laughs> um, we have to give a big shout out to them too, because we found mold in our shower yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, so Laura found it and then uh, she sent, I don't know, actually we were FaceTime and she goes, look what I did uh, while I was at work. And she had taken off the glass shower door, which was gross. And then she saw a little spot on the side and then panned over and there was a sledgehammer sitting, <laughs> not a big one, but a little sledgehammer sitting in the shower pan with a couple pieces of broken tiles and said, when you come home, <laughs> can you help? <laughs> <laughs> when I need something uh, done, I need it done. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, we broke out some tiles. We and found, okay. We, I started, you started it. it. And I took out that giant glass shower door, like a sliding glass shower door all by myself. You unscrewed it. And then I took it out of the house. Yes. 
I started it. You finished it. <laughs> it's the way it goes. When I want something done, I need it done now. Anyway, then performance restoration came and they mitigated all the mold. Like in a day. Yeah. It literally took, not even a day. Took Well, I mean, like it took a day for them to get out there. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were super fast and I know they've got a ton of jobs. So it was really cool. Yeah. So they were super helpful in that. And we have a few other spots that need some help in there right now too. As we get through that, but they've been phenomenal. So mm -hmm. shout out performance restoration as well. That's a real life, true testimonial that actually happened, unfortunately. <laughs> but, um, sorry, I'm getting, okay, so I did a bad thing. I accidentally signed up my stupid phone number. for. I was looking at health insurance policies and now I have like all these health insurance places texting me constantly. Hey, Laura, this is Amy from da da da. Hey, Laura, this is da da da. Leave me alone. It's my fault. I know I keep. You can't say track. leave me alone. Here's my number, but like, don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't, you can't. I'm so that. tired of it. You know what I'm not tired of, Matt? Watching the women's basketball team. I'll never get tired of it. I won't. I'm just, I want it to go on forever <laughs> and ever. Amen. Because last night was so much fun. When I say last night, I mean Monday, April 1st, when Iowa took down LSU. To the fans, it felt like a revenge game. To the players, it was. It was a definitely a revenge. <laughs> it game. wasn't. They would never say that. <laughs> um, but Not it was publicly. fantastic. What was it? Ninety four, eighty seven, and um, it was a great, like, entertaining game, back and forth. Flage is fantastic. Can we just say that she was great? She got into foul trouble. So late. Well, they really had a lot game. in foul trouble. They did. Um, but I think that's the way that people, people, teams try to attack Iowa. Is, well, we're going to come out more. Uh, we were talking about Kate Martin was getting whooped. Like yeah. every time I feel like she was getting hit in the face <laughs> or knocked down. You're and like, she's on the floor again. <laughs> like, yeah, but not like, not as a flop, like legitimately no. like just bullied the whole time. And she took it. Like she just kept going in there and it was, yeah. And she was, was second in points. Mm -hmm. I mean, 21. Something, something like right? that. Yeah. So much fun to watch. I think Gabby Marshall came away with what? Three points. One for three from the Also didn't line. leave the court though. <laughs> also didn't leave the court. Like the way that she can impact a game without... She like goes under the radar in a way. I'm sure when they're scouting, it definitely doesn't come off like that. But to like the the naked eye as you're watching, it's like, I don't know. She's not like a, a super flashy all of the time player, but she's definitely got an inner. She's like an Iowa player. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but it's just really cool to watch because I know a lot of people at the beginning of the season, middle of the season, and the end really were like, I don't know how far this Iowa team is going to go if it's just Caitlin Clark leading the way. Like they're going to have to have some kind of plan and – um you know, there's going to have to be other players that are going to have to step up um, when she has a quote unquote off night. Which That's probably Kaylin going Clark, for 27 and 10. And yeah. Yes. She's still got a, a triple double, but it was an off night for her. Right. Because she didn't go for 40. But um, if she's, you know, having an off night or something the defense is doing that's working on her like someone else is going to have to step up. And it's been so unbelievably cool to watch Gabby and Sydney Falter really great watching her kind of come out of the, I don't mm -hmm. want to say come out of the word work, but really like found herself a starting spot in the final four. <laughs> like that's insane. The, and obviously, uh, you know, con not condolences. That sounds terrible, but our thoughts go out to Molly Davis. Hopefully she's still on the mend. I don't think she was in a brace. At the no, last it game, didn't look like so it. I think she just wears a knee sleeve from what I saw. They were hopeful when the injury happened that she'd be able to play. I'm not sure what the plan is moving forward, but mm. she's um, got another week. As you say, we'll see. Well, a few days. Um, you know who really stepped up, though? Hmm. Was Addison O'Grady. Dude, yes. I mean, she was averaging like eight minutes a game, and now it's like, okay, we're in the Elite Eight. It's a close game. You're going up against some of the best bigs that are in college basketball, and then just never stop running. Yeah. <laughs> like, because it's not that you're not a big that's just going to play under the basket when you're right. playing with Caitlin Clark. You're going to play under the basket and then you're going to You're going to run. You better off. be the first one down there so she can <laughs> So she can the, launch it. Yes. The the one pass. Um, I think I it was think 55 feet was like the thing that they came up with. But everyone yeah. knows which one I'm talking about <laughs> that just shoo, beeline down the court. There she went. And Caitlin knew exactly where she was. The, the, that's the thing, though, is you will get rewarded for running there, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but you also better run there. Yeah, get going. Turn the wheels on. But yeah, that was really cool to watch. Mm -hmm. And um, just super excited for them. Obviously. Just feels like a team. You know, that, that's yeah. a um, that's a player who doesn't start, but comes off the bench and puts in good minutes. And then obviously Stolka got in foul trouble. And so she was able to step in. But mm -hmm. like that, that seems like a team. Next woman in mentality, Matt. That's what it is. Okay. There you go. Iowa way. 
I know <laughs> we were joking. Don't do this. <laughs> don't do this. We were joking last night because I don't know, was it, it was like mid game and Lisa looked up to the, like probably the scoreboard and she looked upward and Matt goes, wait, she kind of looked like KF in that moment. Like, and I was like, you never know. It could be KF dressing up to be Lisa Bluter. I'm not letting you do this. <laughs> I'm not letting you do this. I know. Silly. But anyway, it's just cool. Cool to watch. And um, I just have an immense amount of respect for Lisa and everything that she's done to the program. But then everything that she does off of the court, too, and the way that she handles herself and the way she treats people. Um, been fortunate enough to see that firsthand. I think I've talked about this before, but she is definitely there are very few people in this world that I view as like role models or somebody that I can genuinely look up to and be like, wow, yeah, you know, like that's somebody that, um, you know, I can genuinely respect for the way that they live their life. Um, not just in their job, mm -hmm. but kind of across the board, obviously I had the pleasure of meeting her children and her husband. And, um, and you worked with her daughter, right? Yeah. A little bit with Hannah. Yeah. And they're all just fantastic people like all around, all across the board. So it's just really cool to see obviously her have a, a huge amount of success. So right. anyway, that's cool to watch final four. Actually, that'll be happening the day that this episode comes out. So that'll be tonight wow. if you're listening to this on, on Friday. Very morning. cool. But, okay. Oh, you know what? They're taking on UConn. Did you know? I don't, you, you didn't read the Washington Post giant article on, on Caitlin, did you? The Washington Post? I hope I'm getting that right. Um, I did. It was very long. And actually, UConn never came to watch Gene. Is that his name? I can't think of his last name. Their head Gene coach. Ariyama? Yeah. He never came to watch um, Caitlin play. And she always thought, I'm going to go to UConn. That was like her dream, which what little girl didn't have that dream when, you know, they are still. It was Maya Moore and incredible. yeah, they had some really good players. And so, um, yeah, she was like, yeah, they never came. And I, don't, I mean, it's not like Caitlin to hold a grudge or anything like that, at least that we've seen. She's never really put that out to the media or anything that I've ever come across. But um, it'll be interesting to see like. Caitlin's Revenge Games, you don't want to be on the other side of that. And I was watching, for actually, 40. <laughs> a, I was watching a press conference um, of, what's his last name? The UConn head coach. Ariyama. Ariyama? Ariyama or Ariyama? I should know this, but it's whatever. I guess I shouldn't. I don't pay attention to UConn basketball. But um, he was saying, he's like, yeah, Caitlin had a, fan, a fantastic night. And, um, you know, I don't need her going for 50 against us on Friday. So I never said that Paige Beckers is the best player in the country. <laughs> I didn't say that. I don't want... <laughs> Her to catch wind of that because we don't need a Caitlin revenge game <laughs> against us. I was like, that's so true. Um, but other winter sports, Drake Ayala, runner up at the NCAAs. That was mm -hmm. cool to watch. He'll be back next year. So I'll be excited to see what he It's does. really interesting seeing like the growth of somebody like that mm -hmm. because he got to, I think really 125. We went from Thomas Gilman to Spencer Lee, right? Mm -hmm. And then Spencer Lee to Drake Ayala. And I think everybody was kind of waiting for Ayala to go. Like sometimes Spencer wouldn't wrestle. Mm -hmm. And so Ayala would wrestle. And then he'd be like, ah, uh, you know, he's not quite there. Then he was injured last year, I'm pretty sure. He was injured. But like the growth from the first couple of years, I mean, that's that's pretty cool to be in a pipeline of 125. Yeah, he was a pretty, um, that was an exciting recruit to get. Mm -hmm. People were pretty excited about that. So it is cool to see him reap the benefits of what he's gone through in the last few years. Cause I'm sure it hasn't been an easy career for him. Oh, for sure. Know? Anytime you're, anytime you're behind Spencer Lee, you're probably just waiting for your opportunity. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So congratulations runner up at NCAAs. We'll get the, the title next year. Um, and then let's see what else. Baseball is obviously playing right now. We should get a baseball player on here. You're just going to shake your head and look at me. Yeah, I thought you were going to go somewhere with that. Dead and you eyes. Didn't, so. <laughs> That's it. I was just saying we should be a baseball player. <sighs> okay. <laughs> should have had another spurt of caffeine before you got I out know. here. I know. Yeah, right. I'm leading this conversation. Um, softball. You're the host. They're I'm also the playing. <laughs> Softball's also playing right now out of Bob Pearl. Not right now at this exact moment, but we're in the season. Tis the season. We actually went to a softball game last season. Hmm? That was super fun. I was very Dax pregnant. sat. He loved it. For an inning, I think. They played you and I. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you uh, knew one of the uh, players on the other team. Yeah, it was fun to watch. Um, so, yeah, go out and see them as well. What else? Anything else we want to touch on as far as winter sports go? The men. Um, not in the, in the NIT anymore. Um, but it's kind of interesting how Transfer Portal just changes so many things. Dude, there are crazy. a couple guys in the Transfer Portal now at Iowa, uh, men's basketball. So we we'll kind of see where they... And 
Tony Perkins, I believe, is transferring as well. So we'll kind of see what happens based on that. Yeah. But it was really cool to have Owen on the podcast. Yeah, Owen was great. Really excited. If you haven't see. seen that podcast, that was our last month. Um, really cool. Yeah, Owen Freeman. He was, I put on my Twitter when that episode came out, I was like, he's the kind of guy that like you do the interview and it just really feels like a conversation, which is most of our interviews. And we leave and we're like, that was really cool. But he's the guy that you leave and you're like, we should really have him over for dinner. <laughs> like just like a genuinely nice guy. For sure. Um, super down to earth and it was just a really good conversation. So like Matt said, we had him on last month for one of our off season episodes. So go check that out if you haven't already. Along with the podcast <clears throat> stuff, I don't know if people are watching noticed you have to lift your thing up a little bit look at that talking hawks shirt merch you see that did you zoom in on that james i don't know if you can, can you? is that is that a post yeah, okay he's gonna zoom in on it there it is Sorry. and then on the back do you want to turn around no show everybody your butt no i'm not doing that <laughs> this isn't that kind of show <laughs> okay the back has cool <laughs> stuff on it too back says talking hawks quite a bit um but yeah it'd be really cool uh, not entirely sure if we're going to like drop merch or something, but if that's something you guys would be interested in, I'd like to know. Yeah. Drop a comment. You want to talk in Hawks t-shirt? Maybe we'll do some giveaways. I don't know. It'd be really cool. Um, maybe we'll wait till season and see how that turns out. But maybe. anyway, so football is in spring ball right now, as you call it. Tell me a little bit about that. What does that even look like? What does it mean? What does it lead up to? Usually didn't it lead up to the Des Moines like spring practice? That was in the middle. That was in the middle of it. Okay. And then kids day or not kids day. That's, um, but it's like a spring practice at right. Kinnick. Yes. Um, that's right. It's fun and it's a grind. Like okay. it's fun because you haven't been in the pads for a while. You just been pushing weight. You've been doing some seven on seven, like skills and drills type stuff. And so you're waiting to get out there and compete again. But like you look at that script and it says 148 <laughs> for the minutes and you're like, it's going to be <laughs> like, we're going to be out there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, which as a young player, I think it's better as a young player because your body isn't as beaten up, but like that's your opportunity to show like what you can do because uh, the older guys are going to continue to go. They're going to get reps, but it's more of like a Devo spot. And coach Ferentz will talk about it all the time. And I'm Devo. sure I've said What's this Devo? on the, sorry, Devo uh, developmental. Okay. So it's like the new guys that come in, uh, we call them the Devo guys, but yeah, the guys that are in the process of developing, okay. which KF also has a saying, the hay's never in the barn. So like, we're always developing. We're never at the final spot, but the guys that are going to make the biggest jump are those first year guys. And usually it's with strength. So they just went through, um, like I was allergic to the weight room in high school. And so like that first year of like an actual strength program and like, this is what it is. I mean, that, that kind of growth happens almost immediately. Um, cause you're eating right. You're getting enough calories. Your, your weightlifting program is different. So like that's, you'll see that jump, but then those guys get on the field and then finally get to see how that strength translates. Um, so that's the really cool part about spring ball. Now, if you're in your like fifth or sixth year, <laughs> you're like, uh, it's a, you know, you're gonna be out there for a while. Cause you know, in season you're like 120 minutes, you're game planning stuff, but spring ball is all straight up Iowa versus Iowa. Mm. So, um, you know, they always say that a lot of guys you in like bowl prep and at the bowl game, like you tend to see, um, some guys kind of come out of the woodwork or some guys maybe that haven't got For sure. gotten the looks um, throughout the season, they kind of start to uh, have, a, have a moment to show off. Is that even more uh, exaggerated as you're going into spring ball? It's an opportunity for someone to show off. For sure. And I think probably even more so now with the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got guys, a lot of shifting parts. Yeah. And one of the one of the really cool things, I will say this about spring ball that's really cool, is you get a lot of one ones versus ones or twos versus twos. So it's like, okay, now this is the time where I'm going to go up against Desmond King on a consistent basis or Greg Maven on a consistent basis. So like I get to really test my skills. Whereas in season, you might get five or six reps against those guys, but like now you're going to get multiple play sets you know, or of like, you know, Ben Neiman was outside because he was a Leo at the time and like, okay, I'm going to get him or I'm going to have to block Josie Jewell or I'm going to have to block, you know, Bo Bauer. Like I get to go against those top guys on our team. And that part is cool because mm -hmm. I mean, scout team is fine and like your game planning and stuff like that's cool. But like as a true competitor, you want to go up against the best. So knowing that like, um, I guess Cooper's gone, but knowing you get to go up against like Jamari Harris, like go up against those guys 
that would be fun as a receiver. Mm -hmm. Did you see Quinn Schulte um, mic'd up? Yeah, he was he was talkative here, he was, but like <laughs> it's so funny when you get guys in their element because it's so different. I think it's hilarious. But yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. I love the mic'd up stuff. I um Jay Higgins needs to be mic'd up every practice. <laughs> Have they done his yet? <laughs> I don't know, but like he was talking, he's like, I was wondering why you were so nice to me today. <laughs> you know, like little stuff like that. We gotta get him back on the podcast. You know what I was thinking? We should get him back on the podcast and have him bring his dad. Do we have a fourth microphone that we could get him on? Yes, we do. That would be incredible. Have you seen any of his dad's stuff? No, but I feel like we gotta be ready for a good outfit. <laughs> yeah. He's like all over Twitter. I love it. <laughs> Didn't he do something with like a hat or something? Or maybe yeah. that was Jay. Yeah, no, he had like custom cowboy boots. And there it is. And a hat yeah. and all that good stuff. Yeah. So that would be super fun. And just to throw a little, because we've had Jay on the podcast. We kind of know his story. There's always more to be told, but um, it'd be fun to have that. Good to go along with Jay. That's the kind of guy you want around in spring ball. Oh yeah. Because he's going to bring the energy mm -hmm. and like, he doesn't want to do blocks for 40 minutes, <laughs> you know, like where you're just button heads with the offensive lineman and you're reading, like he doesn't want to do that the whole time, but you know, he's going to bring the energy and have fun doing it. Yeah. And then that in turn elevates everybody else. For sure. Um, definitely like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Infectious personality. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to George around. to a point. Yeah. I was going to ask who on the team when you were playing kind of brought that same energy, but that's probably it, right? At least yeah, on George, CJ, CJ could get there, but he could also get like really, really bad. Really mean. <laughs> but yeah, not mean, <laughs> but like if you're in a wrong route, like he was super competitive. Yeah. And so like he would bring that kind of juice. Did he yell at you ever? Not once. Really? No, actually. I, I, I'm sure he did on like a curl route. I remember one time I gave him crap on a curl route. I was like, I would have caught it if he had thrown a spiral or like something like that. And he got really. Oh, I throw spirals, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was probably the only time he yelled at me. That's funny. Okay. Well, today we have Bella Mir on the podcast. We Incredible recorded this. story. Dude. Unbelievable. It was like every time we asked a question, I was surprised by the answer. And yeah. <laughs> Like she's just um, like breaking people's noses, but like family members and like, that's just the way it is. Like, this is definitely an interview that I walked out and I called my mom immediately. And I was like, you have to listen to this when it comes out, because we were both just like blown away at every single turn. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah. 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 Hospitals exist for a reason. Yes. She did say that. That was her dad's thing. <laughs> yeah. So good. Well, let's That's not give, a little precursor. <laughs> let's not give too much more away because it's just so good. Let's hop into it. We hope you enjoy and love and share this interview with Iowa women's wrestler and UFC fighter, Bella Mir. Did you know that Iowa City Tire does more than tires? I mean, yeah, they've been servicing vehicles in the corridor for like 40 years. Okay, but did you know that before someone had to tell you? Mm, no. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, check out how they're doing things in a very different way at Iowa City Tire and Service. Where service actually comes first. Call 319-338-5401. Need a new roof, gutter, or siding in Eastern Iowa? Call JB Roofing, a local and reliable roofer with over 20 years of experience. They do one roof at a time, unlike others who juggle multiple projects and cut corners. They also serve a 45 mile radius around Kelowna and can help you with any insurance claims. Don't wait to call 319-656-ROOF or visit their website, jbroofingkelowna.com for a free estimate. JB Roofing, the small town roofer you can trust. All right, well, we are going to hop into our interview. And today we have somebody that is extremely, um, should I use this term? Badass. Like She's incredible. And we're so excited to have her on the Talking Hawks podcast. Can't wait to hear her story. Everyone, please welcome from the Iowa Women's Wrestling Program, Bella Muir. Bella, how are you? I'm so good. Uh, thank you for having me on. Yeah. Podcast. Yeah. Absolutely. We're so excited yeah, to we're, have you. We're on. really excited. There's a lot of questions I feel like we're going to get to, but yes. We, we, we got to lay out. Normally, Laura like keeps us on track. And then I think of some random things and then throw it in <laughs> and then she gets back on track. So, like, but it's not going to get super hard, but just make sure you're on your toes. Oh, yeah. I yeah, wrestle, I so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is that, you don't, do you want to be on your toes in wrestling or is it kind of like flat footed? No, you definitely want to be on your toes, yeah, on but your not toes. like so forward where you get snapped down, but right. you want to have like your balance. Happy medium. Yeah. Understood. Okay. Well, let's just start from the very beginning. And first of all, like, I reached out to you a long time ago to get you on here because I was so excited. And then I saw you in person in the um, tunnel after, <laughs> after one of the things. And I was like, should I ask her? Should I ask her in person? What she just really doesn't want to be. And you're like, yeah, for sure. Like, well, that was not the answer. Is it because you were scared? 
I was scared. Of course I was scared. Like 100% yes. Okay, we'll just start at the very beginning. Tell us about kind of how you grew up. Obviously, let's touch on who your dad is because that's going to play into a lot of how you grew up. So go ahead and just start there. All right. Uh, well, I'm born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know anything beyond the West Side, really, because I uh, just grew up on the West Side. You kind of just live over there. Um, I grew I grew up playing like a lot of sports when I was younger. My dad actually, well, okay, my dad is Frank Mir, two-time UFC heavyweight champ, um, hopefully future Hall of Famer. Um, but he kind of pushed me away from wrestling and combat sports for a really long time because he didn't want his kids to go through what he did. So he pushed me a lot into softball and soccer and track. And I actually played football for a long time and uh, made varsity lineup my, uh, uh, not varsity lineup, starting position uh, at Gorman for the high school that I went to. Um, and I actually got really serious into softball uh, to the point where I was going to go commit to UCLA because they called out for, uh, for scholarship over there. And uh, it was before the junior year um, because, you know, like the junior rule where you have to be a junior before you commit. Oh. No, I'm not. I'm not. Oh. Aware. <laughs> is, that, is that a softball only thing? Or no, is that no. A... It's like a like in high school now, when you commit to a sport, you have to at least be a junior. Like oh. when you sign. Hmm. Yeah, I don't Wait, know. like you sign as a junior? Like you or have you're to. You're talking like as a verbal commitment. No, no, no. Like verbal commitment. I think you could be any age. Mm-hmm. But right. You have to at least be a junior in high school to, to like sign. officially sign. Yeah. Got it. Because I guess there's like an age limit or something. I didn't know that you could even sign before before you were a senior. I guess I just didn't know that. Yeah. Never thought yeah. about it. Anyway. Uh, but um, yeah, so I was going to go play softball at UCLA because that was my dream. I always wanted to live in California. I wanted to go D1. And I was just like my whole like life was set. But when I turned 14, um, my dad and mom they like talked to me because like I always had dreams like be a professional athlete and like whatever I was like falling in love with and um they like just kind of sat me down and was just like you know you can't really go professional for softball I mean you can make an Olympic team but like there's not really much money in softball to like go put your life in so that's when I made like the hard transition over to completely fighting and only training uh because I was I would wrestle and like I did jiu-jitsu, like, here and there, and, like, uh, I was, like, a blue belt when I was younger. Um, so I was always, like, training, but never, like, took it seriously. And so when I turned 14, 15, and uh, I got really, really serious with training, had my first pro fight at 17. Um, when you say pro fight, does that mean you were already with UFC at this time? Oh, no, no. Or, uh, like, I don't know how that world works. Oh, Okay. Oof. We talking for a while. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to get into like into the weeds, weeds, no, no, but no. like, I don't know. Like, I know there's rankings, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm similar. I would probably say it's probably similar to again. My Neanderthal brain is thinking like baseball, like yeah, A, yeah. double A, triple A, then the major leagues. Yeah. So f- fighting's kind of like MMA's kind of like the same way, and like where there's levels of being a professional. Because like you say you're a professional baseball player, but it's like oh, you're in minor league, not major. So um, the UFC, like, that's the top level. Like, that's the highest level. Um, UFC, like, they have, like, a lot of rules where, like, you can't fight anywhere else. Like, only the UFC because that's who you're with and your contract with. Gotcha. When you're, like, first starting off with fights, you don't sign with anyone. So you kind of just fight to with whatever organization that's going to give you a fight. So my first two fights were with this uh, organization called Icon is actually now Game Breads. You know Jorge Masvidal? I know the name. Yes. I don't know him, but I know the oh, name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so he took over Icon now, and it's like Game Bread uh, FC or whatever he called it. Uh, but before it was that, it was Icon. And then my third fight was with um, XFN in Oklahoma. So those are like smaller organizations um, where you like start off uh, like young pro fighters to like get their like MMA... Um, Basically just to get a resume, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like just to get you like fights going in. Um, and then like after that, then you sign with bigger promotions like LFA or PFL. Um, and then you have like the big, big promotions like UFC, One, Bellator, like the ones that are like paying the highest. So there are levels. There's not as many levels as like baseball, but there are levels of um, MMA. Gotcha. Dang. So at 17, 
you make the jump. Is that something yeah. that I know that you had the discussion with your parents, it sounds like, but like, was that something that you were on board with from the jump? Like, yeah, I don't mind going out and fighting or was it, was it something where they were like, no, no, you can really do something here. Um, it was kind of both. It was more like my entire life. Like I always, I don't want to say this, like, liked violence, but like, I like just liked aggressive sports. I liked, um, like, like I just love football. It's probably one of my favorite sports ever just cause I just like, like the hitting aspect and like the aggression that it's towards it. And I kind of played like that when I played softball as well. I was like really, really aggressive. Um, and so I really didn't think that truly in my heart that I had that like same like um, like aspect toward that I did for fighting. So I think when they like talked to me, like I honestly, I kind of like wasn't really agreeing with them completely. Cause I mean, mm. I'm young, so I don't really know. <laughs> right. They always listen to your parents. They know everything. But uh, <laughs> once like I got older and realized that they knew what was best for me, um, I like understood a lot more of like the whole picture mm. instead of just being like, Oh, I'm 13. Like, let me play softball. It's yeah. like, um, so I, one state my freshman year for wrestling um, and then I always would do like some jiu-jitsu tournaments here and there. And then 17, I had my first pro fight. She was 34 years old. Wow. Yeah, I was like almost half her age. Dang. Wow. Yeah. And she, so she had been fighting for a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she had that like grown woman strength. Yeah. That you like don't develop until later. That's so crazy. That's, yeah. that's what's different about when you get into that like professional level is like, it's not like, well, if you're a junior and you're wrestling a senior like well, yeah there's a difference there but not that much but a 34 year old against so uh, you said you were 17 yeah <laughs> that's crazy yeah well and it's got to be like so she's got that extra strength like i'm assuming when you're wrestling people your age you're just more athletic than they are or you're just stronger than they are yeah i feel like point. i do have like a natural like uh advantage with my strength um over people like my age even when like i'm wrestling i like to use my strength a lot uh, when I'm wrestling, when I'm in my ties and stuff like that. Because then I feel like when you're going up against somebody that's like that, you got to be more technically sound. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like that's that's interesting to me is if you like be the bully at your age and then like you face somebody and you're like, I'm going to have to flip to be more technique based. Yeah. And maybe that's not how it went, but that's how my mind is kind of seeing it. Oh, yeah. And my dad's like super big on like the technical aspect. Well, he gets more nervous for my fights than I do. Like he's like yeah. sweating. And <laughs> I wish that as a mom. <laughs> oh, my mom's my mom's so bad. All right. Like she like oh yeah like she's shaking and like she has to like she's like having jitters and <laughs> she like can't even focus. She has to stand. She has to sit. She has to stand. She has to sit. She has to talk to Ronan. She has to fix everything. I love she's it. like crazy. But my dad has to warm up when I'm warming up. Oh. To like help his nerves because he's so nervous. Uh -huh. He'll be in the back like shadow boxing with me. Interesting. Yeah. He sometimes Dang. he like has to throw up because like he's so nervous <laughs> i'm the same way too. i'm not as bad as him but when he fights i get really really nervous and i'm okay. shaking the whole time when you were a kid watching him do you did you get nervous or did you when not I really kid, understand no, when i was older and i started fighting that's mm -hmm. when i realized i'm like like how scary it is to yeah. like Damn. be in there right and then you like see like someone like you love and your family go yeah. in there it's like you like know what they're doing because like you've witnessed it you know what they're doing and you know what could potentially happen. Yes. And, and like, you know, the dangers of like just combat sports and like right. just the levels of who you're up against too. And like heavyweights are just worse because they, their power is so ungodly that like they could just knock you out in a punch. So it's like, that's why there's so many knockouts in heavyweight because they're just so strong. Like they just tap you and you're down. That's wild. Yeah. Okay. So I want to go backwards a little bit. <laughs> we skipped. Um, your siblings. Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I have three brothers, uh, one older brother. Um, he didn't really get into combat sports. He's also 11 years older than me. Mm -hmm. um, he did wrestle in digits for a little bit, but um, he like has his own job now and has kids and stuff like that. Uh, my younger brothers, the younger one, Cage, he's 18. Cage? Yeah. With Yo. a K. Yo. That's cool, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't want to talk about my name. <laughs> what? Because my youngest brother, is, his name's Ronan. Okay. And so Ronan Maximus Mir. Uh-huh. And Ronan is the uh, lone samurai. They don't need a master. And then Cage, Max, Cage Justice Mir. And I forgot, Kage, it's like his name in Japanese. It's like it was a 
samurai warrior. Mm-hmm. And my mom named me Isabella Maria Mir. So that has no meaning. It's just, she it's looks like the beautiful. Name. Okay. I know it is beautiful, but I <laughs> kind of wanted like a cool name like my brothers did. But We were saying actually that Bella Mir sounds like one name in itself. I know people do tell me they have, it has like a little ring to it. No, 100% yeah. it does. What you should do is like when you really go professional, like like you're really like, I'm all MMA, you should just put it all together and you just have one name. Like um, like Oprah. It's just Oprah. Like you could just be Bella Mir combined together. That's cool. I'm just out here for branding. Okay? Oh, yeah. That, that's actually really good. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> Look at this. I like that. <laughs> Very oh, good. So my brothers. brothers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. My brother. So Cage, um, he's... He played football for a really long time. Like he played at Gorman. I don't know if you guys know Bishop Gorman, the school in Vegas. They just won nationals. They're number one uh, high school football team in the country. Jeez. Yeah. So okay. like all every player, like they all go D one. Like they're just really really good. And like I think they have like twenty state titles in a row. Like it's it's ridiculous. Um, I want to say that Cade McNamara mentioned that because he's from Vegas too. Probably. Well, he's from. He's not from Vegas. He's from Reno, but he oh, said that I'm sorry. he he's wanted. He's from Reno, yes, but he's from yeah. But probably the team up there, I think, is Bishop Minogue. I think they're the really, really good one. Okay, but and I think he mentioned Gorman at one point because it's like ringing a bell. Sorry, Gorman. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. no, that's right. <laughs> um, and so he he quit football, um, which I get mad at him all the time because he was really, really good. Mm. Where did he, he play? He was what a position? starting uh, outside linebacker. He's I like, should have known it was a linebacker. Yeah. Golly. He's <laughs> six foot, like 220 pounds. Jeez. And he was, he's been this size since he was like 15. He's, <laughs> he's just giant. Yeah. Um, but he's like full committed to wrestling. Um, he doesn't know where he wants to go yet. He's been talking to Mizzou. So he, I think he's going to go there like officially. Is he a senior or a junior? He's a junior. Junior, okay. Yeah. Um, Ronan, he actually, Cage does want to go into MMA, I think. He like goes back and forth what he wants to do. Um, so I'm not sure. But Ronan is the youngest. He does jiu-jitsu wrestling and football. Uh, he's a yellow belt in jiu-jitsu. Um, he wrestles at his middle school. Uh, he's also taller than me. He's only, uh, he'll be 15 in June. He's taller than me already. He's like five, almost 5'10", five, nice. 140 pounds, yeah. But That's a lanky he, dude. No, yeah. <laughs> My mom's like, you need to be a quarterback. But he like gets mad because like he knows like our family like how we are as people, how we're like aggressive and like want to hit people. And my he thinks that's like the pretty boy spot. So he's like, oh, I don't want to play court. I, I want to play DB. And, and, and my, my dad's like, no. That's um, incredible. Also, I just want to mention that like I never knew what my brothers and sisters' weights were. And you're like rattling off like he's 140 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a wrestling family thing to oh, know. Yeah. You just know <laughs> everyone's weight. Mom, dad's. Mom gets mad. She actually, she's been like, her goal's like been getting smaller. Yeah. She's like already like almost 125. That's but she's small. also like 5'2". So she's like really, really tiny. That's a, I'm sorry. She's 5'2 and your dad's a heavyweight champion? Excuse? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so my dad's funny. Like, my dad's like 6'3". He ranges from like 260 to 280. Okay. His range. And then 120. <laughs> yeah. My mom. So good. Yeah. She's really... <laughs> Really small. <laughs> I blame him for my height sometimes. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm like, mom, like, I wish I was taller. Do you? Yeah, sometimes. You don't think I do. that it plays to your advantage sometimes or no? See, now that uh, UFC doesn't have every weight class for girls, mm. so they only have 115, 125, 135, and 145. And if I was taller, like, there's no way I would be able to make 135. So I kind of like, I kind of give her grace on that part. That's the only, <laughs> only reason that, like, <laughs> I'm okay with my height. The only okay. reason. <laughs> Understood. Yeah. Okay, so what was life like in your guys' house amongst the... How many mats were in, around the house? That's, <laughs> like, all, that's all that really matters. What did you guys do for a good time? <laughs> my dad's younger. motto was... Because my mom had all sisters. She okay. never had a brother. She had she had a son, like her from her uh, first relationship. Mm-hmm. But like That was like the only relation towards men at all. And my dad always, my mom would always get mad when we would horse fight because our horse fighting was not regular <laughs> horse fighting. Yeah, I could have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad would always say there's hospitals for a reason. That was that, his motto. That's the motto? Yeah. I'm and he saying. said it at, after everything, after Cade got his nose broken twice and a mirror fell on him one time. Actually, one time we would play dodgeball with these giant pillows because we couldn't throw balls in the house. <laughs> 
So we would get pillows and like, I'm not even kidding. They were this size, but they were heavy. Like there was like weight in them. This is on your mom then for buying such yeah, heavy pillows. Well, yeah. well, it's, it's all about the decor. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because she wants to have the house be all like knit and clean. We yeah, wouldn't it have it knit and clean. It would be, it would be destroyed. But um, there's one time where we were playing dodgeball with pillows and it didn't get to dodgeball at the end. It got to just let me kill you. And I <laughs> didn't realize like how... <laughs> how short the light was above me uh, for the fan. Oh. So I grabbed this heavy, probably like 10 pound pillow, swung it up and hit my brother in the face, broke all the glass in the lights. <laughs> glass was falling over his face. He had blood all over his face. Um, I had glass in my hair and <laughs> <laughs> we got in trouble because we, were, we broke all the lights. <laughs> Was oh, yeah, it, windows been broken. Did oh, you stand over him? Like, yeah, I got like I you. stand over him. And I was like, it's not Dodgeball anymore. I'm just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so when you say you got in trouble after that, what did that even, like, what was getting in trouble for you guys? I can't even imagine trying to. It actually. How no, do you my, corral a kid that just <laughs> broke every light thing, glass yeah. on, his bro, on her brother and is just. I think I'd be at you. a loss. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with you. Go outside. <laughs> <laughs> no. So my mom, she's like the firecracker in the house. Like okay. she has all this energy. She has to have everything neat. And she's like OCD to like the highest level. And anything that we would break or anything, like anything we would just do wrong. She would scream to the top of her lungs <laughs> how we're just not good and <laughs> not breaking the light and <laughs> she would go crazy um but my dad's like such a mellow person that he just doesn't care about i mean obviously he his motto was there's hospitals for a reason so he doesn't even care if something breaks um so so he would just come out and my mom would yell at him <laughs> because she thinks that was he's help. not disciplining you yeah, enough. Yeah. <laughs> so he would just come out and be like <laughs> but yes. like that's it so like that was us being getting yelled at and then now like when my mom yells at me i'm just like we would just laugh now because it's like yeah. mom like just it's relax. Fine. yeah just relax <laughs> so so good i think i also saw somewhere i believe it was cage that you were responsible for his first broken bone is yes this correct what yeah. happened <laughs> so i like how she giggles like this is a fond memory for me <laughs> <laughs> no it actually was really sad when it happened oh okay. like like no, it wasn't. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> so we were up. So my parents have property up in Morton, Washington, because that's where my mom's aunt and uncle and a lot of her cousins live. Um, and we were up in property. So like we're up in the mountains. There's no Wi-Fi. There's nothing like there's people around you. And then we have like like uh, four wheelers and dirt bikes and fishing and like stuff like that. So it's like really, really cool. So they have like probably like five football fields worth of grass and we love football so much so cage was running with the ball trying to go score because we made like little like touch, to, like end yeah. zones and stuff and uh he's about to go score and i catch up to him because that's when i'm still like faster than him because i was like i think i was like 13 and he was like 11 and i shoulder checked him so hard <laughs> His feet like flew above his head <laughs> and he lands on his shoulder and his collarbone completely breaks. Oh. And this is when he was playing baseball when he was younger. Oh. He played baseball for football and he was out for the whole season. So that's when I got sad. Oh, I was like, dang, yeah. like I didn't mean to like completely break your <laughs> collarbone. We we're just trying to make time. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have cell phones, but like, hospitals for a reason. <laughs> oh yeah. So him. my parents just lightly just drove him down. Mm. Saw that he was in a sling like the rest of the trip. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite the story. Huh. I guess, yeah, you are responsible for that first one. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dang. Oh, yeah, I got, I got, I got it to me like for like a whole year. <laughs> Bella broke my collarbone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. And then I also saw something else about how when your mom was pregnant with you, they thought that it was oh, twins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I was like, what? Like, 
pretty much unheard of. When you go, like, for those of you who haven't been pregnant before, when you go get the blood test, they measure, it's called the H- HCG level. Mm-hmm. And it's like the amount of hormones that you have, like yeah, hormone hormones. Count. Yeah. yeah, essentially. And so it it can tell you, like, oh, my gosh, the, the counts are high. There's a good chance it's twins. And most of the time, it's correct. But not this time. Yeah. It was you. Yeah. <laughs> so my mom always, like, tells the story because, uh, like, she likes to, like, talk about her kids all the time. Yeah. And she loves the story because, like, I come as this, like, persona when I'm, like, wrestling and fighting as, like, this aggressive, like, person, strong, like, woman, like, how she, like, describes me. And when I was in her stomach, she went and got the hormone count uh, when my dad, because they both found out that they're having a kid. And the doctor says, well, your hormone count is double, so you're going to have twins. And like my mom starts freaking out because she's like I, crying basically to her mom. She's like, I can't have twins. Um, she's five two. Having yeah. twins would be hard. Well, and <laughs> kids like us, like we were all giant oh. babies, like all over eight and a half pounds. Oh gosh. Yeah. And my yeah. mom's tiny body. So like you could only imagine. No. Yes, I can imagine. I'll tell you a story right after this. <laughs> oh. It's really funny. Okay. But, um, so my mom's freaking out. My dad's loving it because he loves more kids than merrier. And um, they came in, like, later. I don't know how, like, the timeline. But then they, the doctor told her, like, oh, no, you're just having one. So then my mom's like, I just had a Bella. Mm, so it's like uh-huh. she, lo- she loves that story. But, yeah, so my hormone count was double since I was literally in the womb. That's insane. That's since wild. The, since the very beginning. The, like, you're always literally just, very beginning. Just a little extra. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good. Okay, what was the story you were going to yes. tell after that? So, um, yeah, I just forgot it. Um, something about you guys all being Oh, over yes, yes, yes. So my mom had my older brother naturally because mm-hmm. he was like, I think it was like six pounds. Okay. Um, but uh, once like her and my dad had kids, my dad was like, a nine pound baby. I mean, obviously he's like a giant and, uh, they had me and my head got stuck in the canal because my head was so big for her body. Um, that the pressure on my skull would have created some like birth defects, but then like they eventually like got me through. Um, cause like the doctor was like, she can't be in here any longer. Like you have to push. So literally since that moment, my mom had to have C-sections after that no matter what because she didn't want to take the risk and her babies are just so giant that like she literally couldn't push them out. And my brothers were bigger than me. So like there would have been no way. (laughs) Oh my goodness. That's wild. And the youngest brother, he was the biggest. I think I was eight, four. Mm -hmm. Cage was eight, six. I think Ronan was eight, nine. Again, knowing the the weights. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's just> like, <laughs> yes, we have yes. to know every detail because in my house, everything's competitive. So, mm. like, that, then my brothers have that over me. So then when I. Because weighed more as babies. Yeah, so. <laughs> even though when I go home, it's like so funny. When I go home, my cage is obviously like, he's obviously bigger than me, but I still like wrestle him and like prove to him that I can still beat you up. <laughs> but the youngest brother. I'm gone for like so long because I'm here in Iowa. So I'll be gone for like semesters at a time and I'll come back and he like trains all the time and he always is trying to test me. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm heavier than you now. I'm like, so you're really, you're only 20 pounds lighter than me. I still got you. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we always wrestle and I always have to beat him up to like show him that I'm still <laughs> above you. And it is like that with our house with literally everything. Like if we're running to the car who puts our seatbelt on first. When we're eating, who eats first? Like, literally Yo, everything. Yo, I love this. Like, my <laughs> house is just, it's competitive no matter what. And it could be about, we argue about football all the time. Like, who's the best quarterback? And I always say Tom Brady and Cage wants to say Michael Vick. And I'm like, then we start fighting. Mm-hmm. And we don't <laughs> fight normally. Like, well, me and my brother Cage, our last really, really bad fight. Are you talking physical fight or are you talking? Yeah, okay. no, physical <laughs> fight. Like, we fought so bad. We were at my aunt's house and I was 15. He was 13, I think. And it got really, really bad because I told him that my calves are bigger than his and he has really small calves. <laughs> and we literally, I think a plate broke. I shoved him into the cupboards. He was like pushing my face and my, my nose started bleeding because we were punching each other so hard. Like we don't like, we fight, like we're kneeing and like elbowing each other and like 
like sometimes we'll headbutt because like we're just so aggressive that like we just want to hurt you in every way possible. So yeah, like we just like that's just how we fight. Yeah, and that's just how we play too. <laughs> when we play, we punch each other. Like there is no Yo. like there's no like whatever other people do. We don't <laughs> <laughs> like we don't do that. <laughs> and like even like we don't yes. slap pinch bite like we don't do any of the cheating like, i'm going straight for like that. we like we're straight like <laughs> punching each other when we were younger it was bad like like we would like wrestle each other whoever gets take down we would just like start punching each other yeah so you really you've been in mma the whole time literally my entire <laughs> life i've played football and mma my entire life <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> at home at yeah. practice it didn't matter no, didn't matter what did you what was your position in football did you say that i played running back and linebacker the two most physical positions outside yeah. of linemen. Yeah. Were you the, you were the starting running back? Mm -hmm. That's incredible. And you enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I loved every minute of it. That's so wild. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Okay. So we get to the point where we decide, like, softball isn't the gig. Also, what was your position in softball? Short slip and catcher. Checks out. <laughs> like someone yeah. slides into home? No, we don't. <laughs> I've had so many collisions. Have you? I've, I could I could pull up a video right now. I the, I got this girl and like flew her feet right under her because she was catcher and I was running into. Oh, I didn't even think about her as a base runner. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh <laughs> no, there's been so many times where like let's say like I'm in a pickle, I'll literally wait. I would wait for the girl to catch the ball at whatever base I'm running to, and I would just Superman right into her and just drop the ball. <laughs> And then I'd be safe. I feel like, I feel like there's a little bit there because you'd pick out a weaker one. Like yeah. you know they're gonna rotate. You'd be like, I know I could take this one. I'm gonna wait yeah. till she gets it. And then the amount of times I've Superman into people. Like <laughs> one time I threw the ball at because I was short. <laughs> I threw the ball at a girl's back when she was running bases. Oh, I literally like chucked it like it was dodgeball. Whoops. And I, I really didn't mean to, but that one might not be in the rule book. Yeah, no, it wasn't. But I really didn't mean to, but she just lined up to the point where my I just threw it right to her and literally hit her in the back, and she couldn't play the rest of the game. Oh my, my gosh! Goodness. Yeah, because I hit her in the back so hard. <laughs> so uh, crazy. I'm, I'm so glad you were like, yeah, I'd totally be on the podcast. Not like, no, I'm not doing this. Like, take me out in the Carver. <laughs> that would have been bad for you. Tunnel. <laughs> Glad that went positively Although, for me. Since we're talking about like jujitsu and stuff, can you quick give her a sales pitch on why she should do jujitsu? Oh my god, I've been I trying love, to get her to do. I love she convincing women to do jujitsu. Okay, okay. So, but I have to say this. Let me start here. Okay. Part of my job, a large part of my job, is to keep my face looking pleasant. Of course. Okay. Yeah. So, am I gonna mess it up? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. They don't throw elbows in jujitsu. Yeah. So it's all based is, on leverage. It's literally wrestling with submissions. Okay. And it jujitsu is the art to where you could put a submission into literally every single man in this room because your hips are stronger than their bicep. Because in jujitsu, you get put in positions to where in realistic life positions that some girls will be put in um, to where they are vulnerable and they can't protect themselves. In jujitsu, you literally are in those positions every single time you train and you learn how to break a man's arm when he is in your guard and i because like girls will be like i want to protect myself let me do boxing when a man is to get you to the ground it's over yeah when a man explain to me well i live in vegas so this happens all the time explain to me when a man has ever went up to a girl and tried kidnapping her and starts punching her mm -hmm. like never or just, he, gra he grabs <laughs> up he, like he grabs her picks her up and takes her so that's why jiu-jitsu is the best for women because it's all up close. Like when you're defending yourself, it's all from men mostly. And it's up close and it's everything on the ground. Like, and I just love jiu-jitsu so much because let's say like I'm going against like someone bigger than me. And even if they take me down, I'll still choke you out because I, I just know how to like protect myself no matter where I'm at, if I'm on my back. If you have my back, I'm able to escape. Like, that's why I love jiu-jitsu for women and kids. Because no matter the size or uh, the age difference that they're going against, it doesn't matter. Wow. You Thank convinced you. me. You've done it. <laughs> oh, also, okay. about the face. Don't, <laughs> don't do gi. Gi's unrealistic either way. For those of you listening, I think we talked about it before. Gi is just a uniform. Yeah, it's like a kimono. So it's like a... like. 
to people that don't really know jiu-jitsu, I explain like as a little robe. Yeah, like a little robe that you put on, but it's like super, super rough. It's like almost like jean material Mm. with a belt around you and you wear the pants. Um, I don't do gi because my sport, you don't wear a gi. Um, But the gi is what will ruin your face because it's like, imagine like rubbing your face on like hard jean. Like that will like, and give you like rashes. Mm -hmm. But no gi, that's why you wear rash guards. Mm -hmm. You won't. You won't get your face messed up. Odds of me walking out of training with a black eye. Nope. No. Okay. Also, rash guards are essentially like long sleeve. Yeah, like it's material. like a it's like a dry fit yeah. long sleeve, like super tight to your body mm. material, so you don't get um like skin rashes um on your body. Gotcha. But yeah, you, there's no hitting in jiu jitsu, so like there's no going to be no strikes to your face at all. Gotcha. Um, I'm trying to think anything else. Yeah, jiu jitsu is like I never really get my face beat up. And jiu too. Okay. I yeah. only know a little bit about MMA stuff. I did Taekwondo for a long time. Oh, that's cool. And did a little bit with Hapkido, a little bit with Jiu-Jitsu, just based on where we were at. But uh, Taekwondo was like my main thing, but I know that Jiu-Jitsu is really good. And so I've been trying to get her to do that since we've been together. She hasn't gone to a single class. Okay. The, well, I've been like pregnant or like we have I mean, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Obviously, when you're pregnant, yeah. like don't. Not a good choice. Train. Yeah. yeah don't train. <laughs> um, but the one gym that I will go to um, in the off season, Citadel BJJ. Okay. Um, Where's it in at? the area? Yeah. It's okay. uh crap. I don't. I don't know Iowa that well yet. I mean, is it Iowa City area? Yeah. Yeah. It's Iowa City. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I'm not I'll, going where you're going. What about you going <laughs> with you, Bella? No, no. no I'm she's actually, gonna know how to roll with you first of all. Yeah, yeah. I like I. Whenever I go with, <laughs> then like, it gets competitive, and I'm dead. No, 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 no. I'm not like <laughs> you're not her I'm, brother. No, you're not my brother. <laughs> yeah. I'm really only like, like I guess scary when I'm like with my brothers. Okay. Because like when I'm with like, because there, there's girls all the time at that gym that will like like moms that just literally train for protection or to stay fit or whatever. Sure. Like they don't take it seriously at They're all. They're not competing. Yeah. yeah so yeah, like yeah. when I roll with them, like I never like go hard. Cause okay. like I, I know that they have a job and they have to go do things after this. Like this is just a fun thing for them to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I never like hurt them or anything. But yeah, so when you go to jitsu gyms, always go with people that are higher level because when you go with people that are lower level, they don't know what they're doing. That's when you could get hurt. But like if you're going with someone that has been rolling and doing that their whole life, that they know their body weight so well that if you do something like dumb, that they're they're knowing what you're doing. So it, like they protect the whole situation. Okay. Understood. I'm convinced. Oh, yeah. Well done. People, people. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yes. I needed this. <laughs> Me and my dad convinced like so many girls all the time. Because yeah. my dad, like he loves that. Jiu-jitsu is so good for women. Mm-hmm. Do they have kids at that gym too? Yeah. So kids like, uh, so jiu-jitsu, rim, jiu-jitsu gyms run uh, like for classes. Um, so like there'll be like a kid's class and then like there'll be adults class. And sometimes like depending on like how advanced the gym is, they'll have like a beginner class, a women's class, mm-hmm. just depending mm-hmm. on. Um, how many they have enrolled in that Yeah, kind of how many people, yeah. Like yeah. back home in Vegas, they, they have classes for literally everybody, women, kids, beginners, advanced, everyone combined, like, yeah. Cool. We got to get my son into something. I started Taekwondo when I was like six or seven and I was with the adults at the time, but there's like little ninja classes for like three and four year olds. Yeah. And Dax is turning three coming up this year or in a couple months. He totally months. has like violent tendencies. He does? Oh yeah. Why he you put him in wrestling? Yeah. Well, he's Wait, two and a half. half. He's two and a half. Jiu-jitsu, the youngest age is three. Okay. So That's I mean, most he, things. Dax yeah. could roll. Dax could roll. <laughs> But you can get advanced. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like that would be a good outlet. All right. Yeah. We'll whenever like you want to like try it, just like text me and I'll go. Cause I know how like scary that is to like walk into something and you're the only person, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So and especially <laughs> when you're a girl because jiu-jitsu gyms are mostly men. Right. So yeah, whenever you want to go, just let me know. And like, Let's I'll go. still go with you. Okay. Thank you. Best guest that's ever been on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Locally owned and operated, Performance is a full-service restoration company serving Eastern Iowa. As an IICRC certified firm, their multi-licensed technicians have decades of experience in water, mold, and fire mitigation. Whether it's your home or business, this is the team you want in a time of need. Performance Restoration. Call 319-626-2292.
Are you looking for a website that boosts your online presence and showcases your brand? Look no further than Digital Boost, locally owned and operated website company that delivers high quality websites at affordable prices. Whether you need a simple landing page, a full-fledged e-commerce site, or custom tailored marketing solutions, Digital Boost has you covered. Contact them today and get a free quote by emailing Curtis at digitalboostia.com. Digital Boost, the website company that gives you a boost. Rest easy when you have the Bugman's top rated defense protecting your home and business. Providing maintenance and prevention treatments for any problem. Call today for a free quote, 563-554-BUGS. You'll also receive a 15% discount off your first treatment if you mention the podcast. Bugman Pest Control, proudly serving the Hawkeye State since 2008. The Appliance Barn offers a wide range of high quality appliances at unbeatable prices. Whether you're in the market for a new refrigerator, dishwasher, or washing machine, they've got you covered. They also have a delivery and setup department to ensure your appliances get delivered and installed quickly. To find out more, visit appliancebarn.com. Looking to update your home with a remodel, new addition, or new build? Contact MJC Carpentry, a local and reliable contractor with over 10 years of experience based in North Liberty, Iowa. MJC Carpentry's highest priority is crafting a perfectly tailored home. Visit their website, www.micajconstruction.com to learn more. And for a free estimate and consultation, don't hesitate to call 319-461-4786. So good. Okay, so your preference, what do you like best? Wrestling, jiu-jitsu, MMA? What's your, Ooh, that's hard. What's your most, most fun, I guess? <sighs> most fun? Um, if I had to do like a sport like year-round, nothing else. It would probably... It'd probably have to be... And I don't mean this to be like a knock on something that you're oh, not yeah. choosing, by yeah, the yeah, way. Yeah. This is just like ultimatum, like you said, year round, can't choose anything else. I don't know. I think I'm just going to have to do MMA just because it has everything. I was going to mm. say, you've got so many different yeah, facets. Yeah. And like MMA, when you're having fights, like you'll be in a four to six week camp and then you get time off and then you have a fight coming up, four to six week camp, time off. But wrestling jiu-jitsu is not like that like you're in the gym year long year round because you got nationals this week and then you got regionals this week and then you got uh then you got usa events like trials and um the open like so you're just you're just non-stop training and like let's say you make a world team now you got worlds in a few months so it's like there's like literally no end to wrestling like being year round unless like you just say like oh i don't want to compete this tournament or whatever sure but mma like you get to control who you fight you get to control when you fight you get to control like the entire scenario wrestling mm. you you get put in a bracket and you have the 10 best girls in the world and go wrestle so it's mm. like that's why wrestling is so much harder sure that makes sense um you did make the world's team yeah yeah i made okay. the junior world team last year right okay so how did that go like I guess you were competing in the summer of last year? Yeah. So okay. uh, I went to Spain, uh, went to a Grand Prix, uh, won that tournament. It was uh, my first senior uh, international tournament ever. Um, and then I had Worlds the month after in August. So I got fifth. I lost in the bronze medal match um, against Russia, I think. Um, and it was like probably one of the worst tournaments of my life uh, because... I got really, really bad food poisoning, yeah. and I didn't eat for, like, three days. This, like, torture. No, it was really torture. I was sweating every single time. I couldn't sleep. Like, the entire, like, tournament, I probably slept, like, a total of three hours. When you probably got jet lag coming over, because this is international, right? Yeah, I was in Jordan. Oh, my gosh. Do you know what made you sick? So, we think the hotel, because the entire, like, American team got... Uh, sick Chun had the same thing I did isn't that interesting how that seems to happen yeah no I kind of got a little sus about it I was like <laughs> uh -huh. but no Chun was really bad too like as bad as me like literally before so she my, traveled with you yeah okay it was it was her and me and then the entire um, the USA team with mm -hmm. us we think it was the food at the hotel they would just reheat it and put it back out and it would just sit out for hours and they wouldn't change mm -hmm. um but it just like made me mad because like they were like, oh, don't drink the water. And I was doing so good with like not brushing my teeth with water. I would go get water bottles mm -hmm. and that were sealed and then brush my teeth with it. It was so bad before. So 
you had to like qualify for a medal rounds to like get a medal. Um, so the the match to put me into the bronze medal match, I get I get done. Didn't even warm up for any of my matches because I was so dead. I had to conserve all my energy for my matches. I went to the hospital. I had to get hospitalized, and they were about to pump my stomach, but um, we t- we told them like not to, and uh, I had to get um, I don't know how many cc's of IV it was. I think it was like a thousand of cc's that I had to get because I was losing so much liquid in my body. I like I was so light, and I would I would still have runny stools like weeks after worlds it's like it carried goodness. on with me and <laughs> i like literally before my bronze medal match i'm in the bathroom with a tr- a trash can in front of me and then i and then going out and, and then i clean myself up and then go wrestle like oh it was my gosh it was the worst tournament of my life like in so many ways in that so many ways unbelievable that's yeah. one of those things that you don't really think about too like I'm sure the hospital like setting was that different than it was here and that being kind of scary too. It was cuz it I think it was everything was free. Like I don't oh. think they have maybe we paid for something. I'm not sure. I had to get put in an ambulance. Oh my gosh. Yeah, me and Chun were riding in the ambulance. Yeah, it was it was really, was really bad. Was she sick too? She was you really said? really sick. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And she's already I was going to we literally her and I were <clears> talking and we were going to decide if we wanted to pull out of the match because like I, I like literally was on my deathbed and I just did. And I told her, I said, I just want to try and just like keep wrestling. Unbelievable. Yeah. I was, I feel like if you can get through that, <laughs> you can do anything. <laughs> you can do just literally, about anything you want. Literally Coach Chad said the same thing. <laughs> She's like, now that we witnessed that, we could do anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did your parents travel with you or no? Mm-mm. Oh my, so were you like trying to keep them updated on what was going on? I was or trying, like, but eh. like, I just didn't want to be like on my phone because I was just, just dying. <laughs> You're just like <laughs> literally trying to live. Like, like shaking, like just like constantly shaking. This like, is horrible. Yeah. Like I I'm was still competing. I was still competing and at Worlds, like, yeah, like it wasn't like some like just tournament. Yeah. Like, this I'm is like, 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 like I have goals. no choice. Like I have to do this. Yeah. So it's like, wow. It was just. Yeah. Okay. So I get so sad. I'm like, I got fifth. So I always like, I like, I like it, it, like it affected me so much after that because when you like, when you place and you were that affected the entire time, I'm like, damn, like what could, like, have, what, been? What could have happened? I always have that like, could have like thought in my head if like I was not sick. Yeah. And I like get so sad thinking about it, but there's nothing I could do. I have a feeling there's going to be more worlds. Oh, yeah. I have a feeling you're probably <laughs> going to make the team. Just take See, your own food this time. <laughs> yeah. No, pack no. heavy. <laughs> if, if they say anywhere, because like even when I was like, um, when I was in Spain, like. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Like mm-hmm. I was like, so it wasn't like just international food. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, so. But even well, just to take the chance. Yeah. No, I'm, I might just bring my own food. It just sucks because you're there for a week. Oh, so it's like not mm. like you can't just. Right. Unless, like, I bring a cooler or something. And they're really strict in other countries, like, what you bring. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. I and was thinking, like, heck of a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. But. Uncrustables <laughs> are my go-to. There you go. <laughs> Literally, it is. I kind of got canceled for that because um, I was at the OTC, the Olympic Training Center. Okay. Because when you make a team, you, you actually, you're, like, mandatory. You have to go to a camp over there. Oh. Over there, meaning at the center? Yeah, yeah. And where is that? Uh, Colorado. I should know this, but okay. Yeah. Continue. No, oh, yeah, Colorado. So um this guy was there. I don't say any names. I actually don't even know his name. <laughs> uh <laughs> he like no affiliation towards USA wrestling. Like he's just some high school coach or I think yeah, I think it's just high school or something like that. He he tells me, as I'm like explaining, because we were like we're at a nutrition meeting and so we were all saying, like, oh, what do you eat after weigh-ins? And I'm like, oh, like, Uncrustables. Like, you got the bread, you got the peanut butter, the jelly, like, you got sugar, you got the carbs, the protein, and, like, it's all there. The fats. And so... Um, you just go off? He was... Well, I had a giant... So for world team trials, uh, to qualify for worlds, I had a giant brace on my shoulder because I tore my labrum, and I had a floating bone in my socket that broke off my humerus. And... Was it your brother? 
No, <laughs> it was actually at practice. Oh, okay. Um, I think I was going with Ella. So shout out to Ella Schmidt. Um, <laughs> but she actually tore my LCL too. So shout out to her with that. I know. <laughs> relax. I know for sure. Hey, that's why I have to wear that big brace. So thank her for that one. Um, <laughs> and so it was the week right before World Team Trials. So I'm like, I'm going to wrestle. So she, um, our trainer, Lauren, like got me a brace. And like, it's bulky, like. So you had to put on your armor like the samurai, like the names of your yes. brothers. Kyle, it all comes together. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we're, we're all sitting there. He's like, is that what they're feeding you in Iowa? Like, you got to wear that big shoulder brace. Like, no wonder your nutrition's making you so injured. And he like went off on me. I'm like, oh my God, did I do something to you? Like, did I, <laughs> I'm like, did I pin your girl at trial or something? I'm like, what did I do to you? Oh but God. he went to like um, the like head like lady that works there um she like told him like he had to apologize i made a joke about it like one of my posts when i was at the otc like my post about olympic training center i put like uncrustable gang or something oh. like that <laughs> so I, like i loved it i mean i'm used to brothers like they yeah they you know yeah. they beat you up yeah <laughs> i mean and we like talk crap to each other all the time so when he said that i was low-key kind of like laughing i was like it's funny i was like man that's funny but yeah, he had to like apologize to me because it was like a whole thing. It was like dramatic. And I like told the girl that was there, I'm like, he doesn't have to apologize. Like, I really don't care. <laughs> She's like, no, but it was only because it was in front of literally everybody. Oh. He was telling me this. Right. I get that. And I like didn't want to like say anything like cocky or something. I would be like, oh, that's why I won. Or like, yeah. you know. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> the Crestles are obviously doing something. I just, won, I just won the tournament. So. <laughs> But I just didn't say anything. I just Dang. laughed. So I was like, okay. <laughs> that is funny. Um, I also saw somewhere that when you guys were younger, your dad actually built a bench like above the cage so that you guys could watch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so my dad used to have a gym called Suffer. What? Suffer. Yeah, that was the name. Isn't that funny? I would Great. never go. Oh, hysterical. <laughs> you, told me, you should come do jujitsu with me at Suffer. I'd be like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm doing that. <laughs> Sorry. It's cool, though. Continue. But yeah, so the cage, because you find a cage in MMA. Um, he created this like little bench like that like came out of the cage right above it. And we would just climb up the cage because the cage is like a, like, you know, ever seen like, like the, the fencing. Cage. Yeah. Like a fencing, but it's like, a, it's not like metal. It's like, um, like hard plastic. Mm -hmm. And we would just climb up and like go on it. And we would just watch my dad's bar. <laughs> That's so just cool. Like, do rounds with whoever he was <laughs> training with. But yeah. So just um obviously it's kind of like in your nature and how you're born is like you know you feel that like violent tendency but also like that's what you saw too as like a model of like no this is what you do right like yeah well she just said you you just don't do what other people do <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it was so wild <laughs> yeah this what yeah I mean I I literally don't even remember like training the first time because like mm. I had the tiniest gi that you could ever buy a kid that like my dad would just throw me in and just, I mean, I was that annoying little kid that would just run around the mats, but like, I was still like there yeah. training. Mm -hmm. My dad, my dad actually has like cool stories of like me when I was younger, he would put, when I was like literally a baby in diapers, couldn't even walk. He would, there was like this like bars that would go above my parents' bed. He would hold, put me on the bar and he would force me to hold as long as I can. And he said that I would like hold for like, so many seconds and he would like see my face struggling and he said like you would not let go as a until like you drop in like as a baby yeah it was just like an eight <laughs> so great. and there's been times where like i don't know if you guys know what an arm bar is it's like where the arm like sits like right like on my chest and like their heads here and i'm like mm -hmm. using my legs to like break their arm <laughs> he would put his arm in like the same position like on me when i was a baby and he would like act like he was like his arm was breaking and he would put my hands on the right way so I can know the feeling of like extending my hips when I was like so like I literally was in diapers I couldn't even talk couldn't even walk like literally nothing and he's like no go do softball you're like I'm bred for this I have to go fight. I've been breaking your arms since the beginning <laughs> yeah oh my goodness <laughs> I think it was just in his nature too to just coach yeah like I think like he like he wanted me to go towards softball but I think like in the back of his heart, like he wants, he wanted me to just follow in his footsteps. Like I truly believe that. 
I think that's why he had this like nature when I was younger to just train me like <laughs> like a just crazy lady like <laughs> <laughs> crazy lady. <laughs> so good. Okay, so take me through like you get to the end of your high school career. What does it look like as you're transitioning out of that? Like what was the next steps? To Iowa? Like recruiting uh, and stuff like general, that. I'm kind of yeah. curious about that too. Oh, okay. So I actually didn't know I was going to come to Iowa until like March of my senior year, like That's literally right before I'm about to graduate because there wasn't really, I mean, there were some division one colleges for wrestling, but there weren't many. And they're like, all of them were like all on the East side and there's no way my parents would ever let me go over there. Um, so the plan was too just far to, away from home. Or? Yeah. Too far away from home. Um, my family was like really, really close. Mm -hmm. Like they talk about having a cul-de-sac with all of our houses in the same cul-de-sac. Yeah. I know a guy. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. You do that? Yeah, I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you set up. My parents say that, and I'm just like, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so anyways, um, so the plan was just to go to UNLV and just get a degree because, like, my parents, they didn't go to college. So they wanted, like, they didn't want me to go the same way. Um, So they wanted me to at least, like, get a degree. So they wanted me to go to UNLV and just stay in Vegas and just like sign with the UFC, train, fight, make money. Um, that was like their whole like plan. But then I went to a meeting with Dana um, because- Just Dana went White. to a meeting with Dana White, the guy who runs UFC. Yeah, just, oh yeah, Dana White. went well, to like, a meeting. Dana and my dad, they've known each other since <laughs> right. before I was born. So like- That's just wild to just say though. Like <laughs> <laughs> In a grand scheme. Yeah, yeah. to like the- I call the, him Uncle Dana. Yeah. Nice. Jeez. Okay. Uncle Dana. So, so I went in a- I had a meeting with him. I don't know why. I think I think it was to s talk about some tournament I won. I'm not sure. But um, I was there and we were talking and he kept asking me like, oh, are you going to go to Iowa? Are you going to go to go wrestle over there? And I was like, no, nah, like, I'm just going to fight and just keep fighting and just, you know, go to UNLV. He was like, what? He, like, he was the one that pushed going to Iowa. He's like, no, 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 I'm calling Daniel Cormier right now. Like, you're going to Iowa. So he texts Daniel Cormier during the um, meeting. And then Daniel calls and he's like, I know, John, like, we're, we're going to send her over to Iowa. Like, no, 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 she's going to Iowa. Mm. So because my parents, they like just wanted me to just like find, make money and like be established at a younger age. So I don't have to like. Um, struggle do, through. Yeah, yeah, struggle like when I'm older and I'm on my own. And so, um, so Daniel Cormier texts. Larissa Chun and was like, hey, like, I got a girl named Belmere. Like, she'll be really, really good. Whatever he says, like, coming here. And that's literally why I'm here. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, wow. obviously, along with that, you have the resume to back it up. <laughs> it's not just like, yes. oh, it's just a word from a friend. Right. Like, it's not like you just knew the right person. <laughs> yeah. He's and also going to show up and dominate. <laughs> they did help. Wow. Them. Coming here, though, like, like, Chun and Mayab and Tanya, they have made my wrestling like night and day. Really? Like the day I got there to like trials and like how I won trials, that tournament. So the tournament I won to go to Worlds, the year before that I got sixth. And then the year before that I got fourth. And so like when you're like wrestling the best girls in the country, like I mean, it's the hardest tournament at U20s, like 20 and under. So when I won it, like, it was just, like, so shocking to me because the year before, like, I didn't even think about getting top three. And so just, like, going here and, like, working with the best girls in the world, in my opinion, and I have the best teammates and I have the best coaches, like, they are the reason why, like, I won that. Like, I don't take any credit. Like, even after, like, they had the interview after when I won it, like, it was, I gave all the credit to them because, like, I truly believe that my coaches and my teammates are the, the real reason why, like, my wrestling is so much better. That's so cool. And Clarissa Chan, I feel like, is one of my favorite people, too, because when you talk to her, sweetest woman oh, alive. Yeah. She's, like, tiny. Yes. Adorable. 
wears like a skirt to like you guys' <laughs> latest. Yeah. Um, it was the it's our duel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Iowa duels or whatever. And she had like the yellow skirt. And I was like, you would never guess that this woman would just completely take you out. Like <laughs> oh, yeah. one of the best in the world. You she know, <laughs> literally beats all of us up in the practice room. There's not a single it. person that could take her down. Unbelievable. And it's just, so, she's so unassuming. Like oh, yeah. You just, like if you well, saw her. Well, because she's like not even five foot. Right. So you just think, I'm like, oh, let me just kick you. It's like, no, <laughs> she's going <laughs> to. <laughs> She's going to literally grab my leg and take me down and lace me and break my ankles. But <laughs> so crazy. literally, Tanya and Gary are the same way. Like, hand fighting Gary is like death. Like, yeah. you, like he will run you down into the wall and, you, like, you can't get a tie on that man. Mm -hmm. And Tanya's the same way. Every time we're working parterre, so, like, when we're, like, uh, on, the f on the floor and when we get turns, mm -hmm. we, we call it parterre and freestyle. I always try to not get turned. I Tanya, I never can. <laughs> I, I just get turned. I try to every time. Yeah. And um, maybe in the next They're also, they're just so strong, them three. And right. they're all like old. I'm like, how are you so strong? <laughs> I hope they're not I'm listening. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're all like 40 plus. So I'm like, how are you guys like stronger than me? Yeah. Oh, that's so like funny. So yeah, like you're always like getting put in check in that room. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you get to Iowa and you guys have that first, I believe it was a quad duel. Yeah. It was the first one in Carver. What was that experience like? Obviously you had the experience at the soldier salute at, in Car uh, yeah, Extreme yes. Arena. Yeah, yeah. But actually to be in Carver, to have all those Hawkeye fans there, like what was that experience like for you? Well, the first quad duel, um, I tore my LCO. So I wasn't able you to- You were wrestling? No, but the, the duel that you were there, yeah. I wrestled that one. Got it. So the that been tri duel, I'm of. I wrestled, yeah, I wrestled yeah. that one. Um, yeah, shout out to Ella. Um, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Ella Schmidt. Uh, but yeah, so I wrestled the one in January. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh my gosh, that, that was like such a surreal experience. Like mm -hmm. just the fans. I mean, the fans make everything so much better. Yeah. And just walking out of the tunnel and hearing my song, like, come on, it was. It was I wasn't simple. able to be there. So what was the song? Um, it was by, uh. Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Wait, I forgot the name. It means a lot to you. <laughs> <laughs> it really was only because of the meaning. Hold on, wait. I have to look at that. <laughs> it was, it was just because of uh, the meaning. Because like I had such like a long break off the mat because I, of my injuries. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, so like the song in the song. Wait, wait, we'll wait. Find it here. <laughs> I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Oh, it's still Dre. Still dry. You drink Snoop Dogg, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and in like in the song, like it just talks about like, like guess who's back and like mm. and like I walked out and it was just so uh, cool. That's awesome. Because I wanted to do Eminem when he's like, uh, guess oh, who's back? Yeah, I guess who's back? Some shady. But like so many people do that song. I'm like, I want to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. Good choice. But yeah, I like it. But the the extreme arena experience was like crazier so, because, okay. well, because. It was basically a us versus life duel at extreme because yeah. we like there was four life girls in the finals and then and this is life university yeah yeah okay um and we all like all of us like I think we had a girl at every weight in the final at extreme um and the life girls beat our 30 36 and 43 and the last one was my weight and I'm wrestling her and I pinned her in the first period and the arena was just, I couldn't even talk because like I, it was so wow. loud. Like everyone went crazy when I put her to her back mm -hmm. and that picture of me like doing this. Yeah. Cause like, I was just like trying to like take it all in mm -hmm. and like, just like the crowd. That's pretty, that's and, like, pretty dope. It was like, I always like go back. Like when I'm like, like want to like feel hyped. Yeah. I always go back on that video and I'll just scroll to that part <laughs> and I'll just like listen to the crowd and it just like oh, it just gives you goosebumps. It's crazy. That's so cool. When we were thinking about um like Life University, Missouri Valley is another one. Um, like they probably aren't. I could be wrong, but they probably aren't used to that magnitude of a crowd, right? No, competing in front of that many. I people. mean, I feel like not even men's wrestling yeah. is used to that kind of crowd. Like even like at Penn State, like they're their gym is not even close to the size as Carver. Sure. And um, yeah, like I I have never been to an arena for college athletics like Carver ever in my life. Mm -hmm. Like I've been to like a lot, even like 
when I go to the UFC fights, it's not much bigger than Carver. Sure. I mean, there's probably like 15, 20, mm -hmm. 25,000 people. So, yeah. so it's like, I mean, it depends on the arena. Right. But there's literally nothing like Carver. That's cool. Yeah. Good plug. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, couple, I want to do like two more things and then I'll let you get back to your life. But okay. um, one thing, <laughs> you were the first UFC NIL deal, right? Mm -hmm. So how did that kind of shake out and what exactly does that mean? Okay, so um, I was the first because, so when I came here, like women's wrestling, they don't, they don't give out like much scholarship. Um, and like I got like a percentage, but um, it wasn't enough to cover co like cover everything yeah right. and i mean my parents like there's like they couldn't really like pay for all of it so um when dana wanted dana and daniel wanted me to go to iowa like really really bad like my parents were like like we need something like it's really really expensive to go especially out of state right um so they can't just give me money. So like they had to go through NIL. So that's like how that like whole process started being like, okay, well let's just ha have you be the first NIL athlete. So they basically just like give me um, a check every semester. Um, that's so cool and, though. Like yeah. what a like statement, you know, for mm -hmm. UFC to make. Like we're gonna, not only does Iowa have obviously one of the first power or the first power five women's wrestling team, yeah. but also we're gonna totally validate like this first woman to be like your fighter, yeah. like the first NIL deal. Like there's just a, it's a really cool thing to see. Oh yeah. So that's well, awesome. It's something that other organizations can't do. Like the NFL can't give college kids money. Yeah. The NBA can't give college right, kids right. money. Like this is the only space that this even exists, which is why it's so crazy. Yeah, I always have to like explain to people why I could still fight and still wrestle. Yeah. Because people like, let's say you're playing college baseball. You could play college baseball and go play in the NFL at the same time because it's two completely different sports. You can't get paid for the sport you are in in college. Wrestling is an MMA. So I could wrestle in college and still fight MMA professionally. Because technically it's under a different umbrella. Yeah, and it's a sports. completely different sport. Huh. So that's why you could let's like you could do gymnastics in college and you could go play softball professionally. Right. So it's like, yeah, completely different. Someone should do yeah. that. Someone should. I don't think people really know that. <laughs> ben yeah. Keeter might be the first. Ben Keeter. Yeah. I mean, honestly, <laughs> if, in college, he could wrestle in college and then go play in the NFL. 100%. I mean, I don't know. Where he would like his NFL, you have to go to that city and go train. So I don't know. Well, how I mean, that... there's there's some things. There's like OTAs, which are mandatory, and there's some oh, other really? mandatory spots. But like, there are times where like guys will come back here and train that are in the league, or they'll oh, okay. go train with other yeah, strength coaches. They would overlap in seasons and training. Yeah, like That's what, what about like in say. season? No, yeah. in season. Yeah, I don't know how much mandatory they've got in season, but I mean, you got to be like there now, to go through like, game plan. Them playing both, like yeah. overlap to season all the way to January. That's insane. Too. I didn't even think he was going to keep wrestling. I thought he was just going to, because like it was so late in the year. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, he might just play football. Right. I mean, they make more money, so I don't see why not. Yeah. yeah he's a freak. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we found out. He's That's like, cool. we, we asked him like, what, what advice would you give to somebody doing this? He goes, don't listen to anybody. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> right. <That's laughs> so, cool. It was like, like, you know, like in the beginning or when he committed, everyone's like, he can't do it. He can't do it. There's no way he can do both of those things. And he's like, okay. You know, just like completely toned it out. But That's like, so cool. for you, what has, what's one of the biggest pieces of advice, I guess, for young women that are getting into wrestling? Because it is, it's growing in popularity, especially here in Iowa. What's oh, yeah. like your biggest piece of advice for them? Um, I mean, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Like, just don't listen to anybody because mm -hmm. no one knows your best interest besides you. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing for me in wrestling was just knowing that there's going to be other girls in your sport and to train with. Like you don't have to train with that same boy partner that I always had to train with. Like wrestling's growing, like just join it because there's other women in the sport. That's cool. And super special too. Like you said that you're not stuck wrestling against guys yeah. and not having the same level of competition when you're I wish I, I wish I had that. Like I wish there was so many girl more like more girl partners when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So when I was younger, I always had to train with boys. True. And now it's like there's whole teams full of girls. Like it's just so cool. Yeah. Did you um watch the I okay. I'm totally getting off track here. Sorry. Did you watch the Iowa girls state? I watched some of it. Yeah. But um, I didn't watch like 
all of it. The whole thing, yeah. That's pretty big. Looks like there was I watched season Na- of competition. Naomi's match. Okay. Our next like her and Kiara going to our like new commits. Yep. Um, I love her. She's such a good person. Yeah. Yeah. And I watched fun. her match. She was the first four timer. Um the uh I was about to say about Iowa State champ. Dang. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> last thing, cross necklace. Oh Tell yes. me about how faith plays into your journey with wrestling, MMA, all the things. Um, it's kind of been like a different situation with me because mm-hmm. my family's really atheist. Okay. Um, and coming to Iowa, I kind of like been kind of figuring myself out in that kind of situation. Yeah. Um, I think like I want like um I've been reading a lot and I think I want to be faithful. And like religious, yeah. Um, so I'm kind of like still like trying to like figure out, and I kind of do little things to like um, help me like get into it. So I like I like to like wear this, and um, I like to like do like study uh, groups and stuff like that. Um, because like I just like see so many people that wrestle and how they're really religious and how they put their faith into somebody above them. Mm. And I think like I just I I think I like that aspect of having like um, order. In religion, because when you're atheist, you don't really have order. Um, and atheists kind of like get sad sometimes because you feel like there's no end. Like you feel like there's there's no like end. Like, yeah. Like you just your there's brain, no hope. Yeah, yeah. That's the, there's no hope that like you're just your brain turns off and that's it. And so I kind of think I I feel like religion's like a little happier. Yeah. So I kind of like want to do more of that. That's cool. Yeah, that's a story we haven't heard. On really? this podcast because that is typically a question that we ask because you know guys have the cross tattoos oh, or yeah. they, you know girls yeah, are wearing yeah. the necklaces or guys wearing the necklace whatever and we're always like oh like what does that mean to you and like how does that play in and stuff like that so that is something that we have not heard and that's pretty cool yeah thanks for sharing yeah of course that's really cool okay bella i will let you get back to your life i feel like we've taken quite a bit of your time and <laughs> oh, i know you got one, one, one more thing one more thing what is it um i want to say that tattoos like are a really big part of my life okay and they all of them have meaning and when you said earlier about the shoulder brace and like the whole warrior aspect i have a tattoo on the back of my shoulder of mulan and it's her cutting her hair for war and i always explain this story to people why i love this tattoo so much because my in the movie mulan she cut her hair for war because she's trying to look like a boy because her everyone in the male um families all over china had to go to war and her dad was so old and sick that Mm -hmm. he was just gonna die so she took his place and cut her hair for war and went to battle for him and i always have this i always like just look at it every single day and i know that like my dad is retiring and i'm on the rise and i'm taking his spot (laughs) chills chills i i love that tattoo more than anything dang yeah i also got chills that's so cool. Maybe is there potential <laughs> that you guys will fight on the same card or no? We were gonna do that last year, but I went to Worlds. Okay. So I'm hoping, like I'm hoping so bad this year is gonna be the year. So I really wow. think that Can we're we come? Gonna, of course. Okay. Whenever, like I mean, I'm gonna post it all over it when the date comes, yeah. but first you gotta go to jujitsu class. Then yes, we'll go. you have to go to jujitsu. That's a requirement. We'll that's yes, that's you have the stipulation. To go. Done. <laughs> okay. Bella, oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing that last piece yeah. with us. That's really it cool. Just, it, I wanted to say that earlier, but then I was talking about something else. But yeah. <laughs> That's wild. That's okay. Yeah. So good. I We could go on for another couple of hours, to be completely honest. So we're going to have you back maybe next year, right before wrestling season starts or something like that. And oh, yeah. And just continue this, awesome. this conversation. Yeah. I'll update you what happens in the summer. So good. Or maybe I'll see hey, you guys in the summer. just don't wrestle Ella anymore, okay? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ella, you're fired. Ella, you're, you're fired. wrestling Bella. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Bella, thank you so much. We wish you the yeah, best of luck in whatever comes next for you in terms of the summer and fighting and just all of the things. And again, just appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. Well, we hope you loved this episode just as much as we did. And if you did, please comment, like, subscribe. Make sure you're following us on social media. We're on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Whenever you see a post by us, we would love it if you would share it because we want Talking Hawks to be all over the map. Thank you guys so much for tuning in um, and we will catch you next time. Go Hawks. (laughs) 